to Morgus Presents. Morgus Presents is brought to you by Cox Communications, rebuilding a greater New Orleans together. Oh, good evening, my dear friends of science, those of the higher order. <laughs> An exciting evening is coming your way in scientific research. It's going to unfold right before your television sets. In fact, so exciting is tonight's presentation. I can hardly wait for you to hear what I have to say. <laughs> but I will say this much. You, yes, you are going to play a vital role because it's going to take place on the streets of this city tonight. In fact, in a moment, I'm going to reveal an extraordinary scientific experiment that requires approval, of course, of the mayor's office. Uh, well, simply because it will immediately affect the conditions in every neighborhood in this city. <laughs> now the bad news. The bad news is they have turned us down at the mayor's office. However, you see, I happen to have the mayor's private telephone number. <laughs> and in just a few moments, you and I are going to make a few persuasive phone calls. <laughs> Hold on for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to get with the compressor. Oh. <laughs> oh, friends, what you are about to witness is a scientific achievement you probably never thought would happen in your lifetime. Now, this has to do with controlling the atmosphere and the temperature conditions on the streets of the entire city, the idea being to actually air condition the city like you would a giant shopping mall to an average year-round temperature of 75 degrees year in and year out. <laughs> I know, this must sound like some cacophony idea dreamed up by some mad scientist with a mental hernia or something. <laughs> but believe me, once I explain to you the laws of probability and the new discoveries that I've made in superconductivity, you'll be as excited as I am, as a matter of fact. Now, these are coils. I'm going to explain quickly how air conditioning works. Of course, I'll have to do it in just a few seconds, but you'll get the idea. Now, you start out with condenser coils and a fan, and a fan blows air across condenser coils. The compressor compresses the air, and then the heat transfer takes place, you see? And then it's sucked out by the blow fan, which goes through the ductwork over the evaporator coils. <laughs> now, that's quick and simple. The same thing can be done in tons and tons. You carry a ton of air conditioning in your house. <laughs> but suppose we had about one million tons, and we would use ductwork that has true insulation. And what is the best insulator in the world? The ground, the earth. <laughs> you engineers know that. Well, friends, we're talking about the sewer system, the rain drains of the entire city. Look at this. Look at this idea. Now what we have here is simple, of course. We have the housing unit inside the lower two floors of the old city ice house. The air is condensed and blown through the ductwork down into the manholes into the sewer system. And what's in the sewer system? <laughs> Water. Of course, there's just about a third of these huge, huge conduits with water. And of course, water helps the cool air. It travels this way, that way, and goes all the way through all of the ductwork under the ground throughout the entire neighborhoods of the city. And where does it come up? Through the rain drains, right at the curb. That's right. Rain drains three or four in every block. And that's how we're going to do it. I know that sounds fantastic, but the cool air in the, in the summertime, that goes up, only goes up about 300 feet. So for 300 feet, we can maintain 75 degree temperature. And in the winter, all we do is convert to heat and blow heat out of there. And you know, heat loves to rise. And then the cold air tries to come down and the, the hot air keeps the cold air up. And that's how we'll maintain 75 degrees throughout the city. Oh, you can see what's coming. You'll be able to throw your windows open and cut off everything tonight. Now hang on for just a few moments. We're gonna let the station interrupt here with the, you know, a little entertainment. Go ahead and roll it for a few minutes, but you'll want to hang on for this one. This is the biggest I've ever done. Friends of science, it's time once again to Ask, Ask Dr. Dr. Morgus. Chuck Fisher of New Orleans writes, Dr. Morgus, I like to play the horses. Is it possible to see into the future? Oh, yes. It's possible to see the future, of course. <laughs> for instance, uh, 
if you jump in a parachute, and the parachute doesn't open, <laughs> you'll see it coming, fellow. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Morgus. This week's entry will receive a coveted Morgus t-shirt and the admiration of the scientific community. You too can have your challenging question answered by Dr. Morgus. Send the doctor an email with your question, name, and address to morgus at cox.com. Oh, yes. Well, you're going to be sorry. I have ways of persuasion. You'll see, fella. Uh, uh. Oh, they're turning us down. Well, believe me, we're going to handle that. Chopsley? Oh, I haven't seen Chopsley in the last 15 minutes. Well, anyway, we will be air conditioning the city, just as I promised, friends because we are going to give out the mayor's telephone number. When he hears all you voters calling, believe me, it'll go on tonight. Here's his number, write it down. 85, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll bet he's sending one of his men right here. Yes, sir, come in. You're from the mayor's office, huh? No, I'm from the television station. I'm Larry Lane. I'm surprised you don't recognize me. From the television station? Yes. Oh. Oh, look, you're just the guys I want to see. We, we, we need publicity for this, you see? We're going to air condition the city through the sewers. And if, yes. if the TV covers it, why, the, the mayor will have to go along with it. Uh, Marcus, it's over with. It is over with. We've checked it out. The mayor just will not go along with it. There are too many problems. Problems? Look, I'm going to save people money on, on their electric bill. Well, they won't even have to buy winter clothes anymore. Yes, well, that's part of the problem. This will hurt retail business. Look, even the ecologists have said that the, well, the leaves uh, won't know when to fall off. The flowers won't know when to come out. Not to mention the smell from the sewers. Oh, the smell from the sewer. Look, I mean, people will put up a little smell for this no. kind of convenience. Look, I have a little surprise for you. Do you remember a guy by the name of Ralph Edwards who created a television program called This Is Your Life? Oh, of course I do. Uh, absolutely. Well, because of your many humanitarian experiments, your attempts to help mankind, our television station has decided to honor you in a similar manner. Dr. Momus, Alexander Morgus, this is your life! This is unbelievable. Oh, this is Dr. Fantastic. Morgus, Dr. Morgus, if you will please just sit down, relax, make yourself comfortable while we, your humble students, stand. Oh. Dr. Momus Alexander Margus, the 65th, descended from the direct line of the Margus science family, who traced their origins to universal intellectuals called the Higher Order, who visited Earth from another planet over 4,000 years ago for the purpose of advancing our civilization. Born in a converted livery stable in the home and laboratory of his dear parents, Drs. Pandora and Momus A. Margus, the 64th, both research scientists. Perhaps it was a sign of things to come. The first baby teeth you cut, Doctor, were your four wisdom teeth. What was astounding was they all came out in the front portion of your upper gum. It was soon obvious that you were destined for great things, Dr. Margus. Thanks to your mother's prenatal educational training, you were speaking your first words in a matter of days. And by the age of five, you had already mastered differential calculus. But tragedy was to come a short while later. Your dear parents died while inadvertently discovering atomic energy. Here's a picture of the mushroom cloud as taken by a distant neighbor while photographing his cows. And where were you when this unfortunate tragedy happened? Oh, well, I was out in the hills uh, looking for uranium deposits. Yes, and lucky for us. And when you got back? Oh, all I found was a big crater in the ground. Yes, and there you were orphaned at the age of six and no place to go. But your dear parents had made arrangements with a nearby neighbor just in case anything happened to them. It was the Willard Mumphrey family. I'll never forget the time you electrified the fence around the chicken coop to keep the foxes away and electrocuted all of the chickens. Oh, Papa Mumphrey. That's right, Dr. Marcus. All the way from Crater Lake, Nebraska, your old neighbor and temporary guardian, Mr. Willard Mumphrey. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, my boy, my boy, it's so good to see oh, you. Oh, you look good, Papa. <laughs> His parents had given me two large trunks for safekeeping, full of all kinds of books and scientific equipment. Just in case anything should ever happen to them, there would be enough in there to pay for his schooling. Yes, and we're going to learn a lot more about that schooling and many other great unknown facts about this great doctor while you two get reacquainted and we let the station interrupt us for just a few moments. You could tell him about my experiment. We are back with Dr. Morgus and this is your life and what a life it has been. Now, while you're away, Dr. Morgus has been renewing acquaintances with his dear old friend, Professor Bernardo Diaz de Silva from Vasco da Gama Med School on the island of San Pedro in the Caribbean. Now, after graduating, at the age of 16, you were too young to get your medical license. Right. It was then that Uncle Sam called, and you answered, Dr. Morgus, by joining the Navy. <laughs> With your unusual gift of scientific knowledge, you were assigned to a top-secret division of experimental underwater weaponry development. And it was here that you came up with the idea of a human fish to replace the many scuba diving Navy frogmen. However, later uh, at your court-martial, Ensign Podertsky exonerated you by admitting that he had volunteered for the unusual operation. He did, yes. <laughs> On the day of the operation, I never dreamed that a whole new career was opening up for me in civilian life. <laughs> Dr. Marcus, here he is all the way from Gulf Shores Marine Life in Biloxi, Mississippi, in St. Luke, Podertsky. <laughs> Podertsky. You look terrific. I feel great, Doc. And thanks to you, I've got a good career. Well, any side effects? No, oh, no. Well, I have this little problem with motel beds when I'm on the lecture circuit. Oh. They don't have a slit in them to take care of the fin that oh. you placed on my back. Yeah, well, I told you that'd be a little minor inconvenience, you know. Well, that's all right. The real inconvenience is the bucket. Oh, well. And as a matter of fact, I've got to use it right now, Doc. Oh, well, go ahead, yes. Uh, you see, uh, I planted uh, gills inside of his nose. He has to keep the gills wet at all times. That's why I have to do that occasionally. That's, that's, that's the problem. This is indeed incredible, Dr. Margus. And to think that he performed this unusual operation while he was still in his mid-teens. Uh, but, Dr. Margus, we must move right along because... After your short stint in the Navy, you went to join the great physicist Dr. Maxwell Murphy at his Institute of Advanced Scientific Design and became his research assistant. That's right. Now, it was here, working with Dr. Murphy, that you made your first impact on the scientific world when you delivered a paper on the theory of inevitable catastrophes. Now, this became known as Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. Dr. Marcus, I think you might recognize this next voice. Hello, Morgus. This is a dear old friend. That's him. I would just like to say that... Hello. Hello. Uh, look, something went wrong with the microphone. Uh, oh. Would you send in uh, Dr. Murphy, please? Oh. Let me tell you, you look great, Dr. Oh, Murphy. Yeah. This young man is responsible for making me famous. That's right. <laughs> he proved all of my theories. <laughs> so many things went wrong when he was in my class. Yes. Momus, are you after remembering the formula? The formula? Oh, I still remember the formula. Oh, absolutely. And As a matter of fact, it was uh, E equals T times pm error equals the worst time times the possibility to the maximum <laughs> i remember it dr murphy this is truly you. astounding i mean how many of you in the audience truly knew the real formula for murphy's law well i think we'll let the station interrupt us for a moment but we'll be right back
Good old days. Oh, I see we're back, and we oh. continue our review of the fascinating life of Dr. Momus Alexander Morgus. Dr. Morgus, after your theory of inevitable catastrophes, which became known as Murphy's Law, your name became a laboratory word and resulted in your being given your medical license to practice, though you were only 19 years of age at the time. Uh, well, as we continue, it was then that you were destined to follow the dictates of the higher order and set up your own scientific laboratory. Its location had already been pinpointed to an exact geodetic spot on the face of the Earth for interplanetary communication reasons. That spot, by chance, just happened to be the old former city ice house owned by a Mrs. Alma Fetish. Don't tell me you're bringing her in here. Oh, no, doctor. This is supposed to be a happy occasion for you. Now, though your orders were to purchase the building from Mrs. Fetish, your lease purchase agreement had fallen into default for back rents due to a number of unfortunate experimental setbacks. However, many of your experiments have changed the lives of so many people, starting with the very first experiment you performed at the Institute on a Mr. David Landry. I'll never forget how close I was to dying from high blood pressure when you saved me with the implant. Yes, Dr. Marcus, all the way from Butte, Montana, your very first patient, Mr. David Landry. Landry, you look terrific. Thank you, Doctor. You look great yourself. Well, you know, this man saved my life. My blood pressure at the time was 450 over 240. Then Dr. Morgus put in this pressure regulator. Uh, I must be nervous. It's a little high right now. Yeah, you better turn it. <laughs> See that? That is uh, absolutely amazing. And yet, there is more to come. I had stomach problems and had to have yearly operations until you, doctor, eliminated the need for surgery. Oh, that's got to be Elmo Wilson. Yes, doctor, one of the seven wonders in the book of medical surgery, Mr. Elmo Wilson. <laughs> Oh, good to see you. Good to see you, Doc. Good to see you. What was it that the doctor did for you, Mr. Wilson? Well, I had a chronic stomach problem, and I needed surgery every year in the same location. Dr. Morgus here eliminated the need of an operation by installing the skin zipper. That's right. That's all. All you do is unzip the stomach. You see, like this, you pull it down, and you can, you can get right to the problem. This, right away. this is absolutely <laughs> astounding. I, I don't know which one of these is the... Oh. I, I was saying that the, the, the most... Tell you what let's do. Dr. Marcus, why don't you go visit with some of your friends? We'll let the station interrupt us, but we'll be right back. All right. All, all right, gentlemen. I, I, I must call you all together now so that we can conclude this presentation and pay honor to a most remarkable man, Dr. Momus Alexander Margus, who has changed not only your lives, but has made an impression on the lives of so many of us in the television audience. And before I make this deserving presentation, Dr. Margus, I have a little surprise for you. Our television station is happy to advise you that your television contract for broadcasting these magnificent innovations in science will be renewed indefinitely. Now the award, Chopsley. Dr. Momus Alexander Margus, your deeds speak far more than anything that we can say. It's, it's somewhat astounding to all of us how the talents of 12 men can be crammed in your remarkable brain and, and how you have used this brain to tumble the walls of scientific ignorance that surround so many of our academic establishments. But you maintain a humility through it all. Without acceptance of federal or public aid, you devote yourself unselfishly to a host of humanitarian causes. And so, it gives me great pleasure to award to you this... Are you expecting someone? Uh, no, are you? Uh, no. Well, I'll check it out. Oh, there couldn't be anybody here. I'm interrupting. No. Wait a minute. H how did she know I lived here? In fact, how did all my patients here know how to get here? Well, we just ran an ad in various papers around the world with uh, your picture in it and a caption that said, Do you know this man? Is there some problem with that? Oh, well, no, uh, not really. <laughs> that's him, that's him, right here. I'm Special Agent McCloskey from the DA's office. Just, just a moment, sir. We have a live television program going on here. Oh, yeah? We may have a murder going on here. I have a writ of habeas corpus. Where's the body? 
Oh, now look, I know this woman. I can explain everything, believe me. Oh, my husband was alive when you came to pick him up. Oh, well, that's right. But when I got him here, 30 seconds he had to live, and I preserved him, just like I told you on the telephone. Never mind. Get him out here immediately. Oh, oh that's no problem. I've got him stored right out here in the attic. Oh, that's no problem right here. You see, until his sickness is cured, I have him preserved in suspended animation in the form of solid particles. Ah! My <laughs> chester! What kind of cockamamie story is that? Look, you don't understand. Every single solid particle of his body is locked up in this jar. Why, why even the great Dr. Maxwell Murphy can explain the whole theory, can't you, doctor? Tell him. Absolutely, sir. I myself can prove beyond the shadow of... Ah! All right, that's it. That did it. With all these public witnesses, this won't even have to go to trial. Oh. Reverend. Reverend? What do you mean, Reverend? Let's go. My son. My son? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall Next not sleep. When more of us, the magnificent, takes us into the realm of science. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Presents was brought to you by Cox Communications, rebuilding a greater New Orleans together.